I'm thankful to be an American. I'm thankful to be free. And today we celebrate the 245th, I believe, anniversary and birthday of this great nation known as the United States of America. And I know there has been much that has been said that has tried to devalue, and may I even use the word patriotism in the right way, There's been many that have said we should not be proud to be an American. We should not do this. We should not wave the colors of our flag. We should not. But I want to tell you something. Despite the agenda that is out to destroy the moral fabric of freedom that is within our nation, I'm here to tell you we still live in the most blessed, prosperous nation in the entire world Because God has blessed America. And I don't care what is said around, whether it be social media or pundits, it doesn't matter. What agendas are being spread within our public schools. We need to thank God for the freedom that we enjoy every single day. To come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And to know that underlying is a foundation of godliness and righteousness that has built this nation. And so today, I just want to take a few moments to talk about the colors of freedom. Because from the beginning, the greatness of our country came at a high price. 56 signed the Declaration of Independence, and of those, nine died of wounds or hardships during the war. Five were captured and imprisoned, and in each case subjected to torture. Several lost wives, children, their entire homes and family. One lost all 13 of his children, two wives, brutalized brutally by the British. All at one time or another were victims of manhunts and driven from their homes. Twelve signers had their homes completely burned. Seventeen lost everything that they owned. These men not only pledged, but they gave their lives and their fortunes, and not one went back on his sacred honor. But not just those 56 Since the signing of the Declaration of Independence, there have been men and women that have put their lives on the line, sacrificing everything so that we as a nation could remain free. And I want to take just a moment, if you will bring up the house lights, that there are those among us today willing to pay that same price to preserve our freedom and make America great. I'd like you, if you have served in the military in any capacity, to stand right now to your feet. And we want to give you the honor that is due you because you have fought to preserve what we enjoy as the freedom that we enjoy in the United States of America. Come on. Come on, give it up for these men and these women that have so bravely served to keep our nation strong. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You fought to preserve a land who's prospered and been blessed beyond measure. A land who from its inception has been looked to as a world leader in freedom and democracy. A land that for 245 years has cried out to the oppressed emulated by the words written on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. America is a great place to live. How many are glad to live in America? It's a great place to live not just because of the beauty and the majesty of its landscape. You could go to the vast, vast majesty of the Grand Canyon. You could see the wonder of the Golden Gate Bridge spanning across the San Francisco Bay. You could see stirring landmarks like the Lincoln Memorial lit up at night or Mount Rushmore boldly proclaiming the faces of four of our most famous presidents. America is great, not just because of Lady Liberty standing tall and proclaiming freedom day and night in the New York Harbor. You could go to the rushing falls of the Niagara. You could travel 3.7 million square miles of this great land and see sights that would take your breath away. You could meet many of the 311 million 
million people who make up the United States and breathe in the open, fresh air of America's mountainside. You could go to great cities like New York City and Los Angeles and see just the bright lights of the metropolis of great cities that have succeeded in this land. All of these factors and many more make America great. But there was a French writer named Tocqueville. He visited America in 1831, and this is what he said. He said, I sought for the greatness of the United States in her commodious harbors, her ample rivers, her fertile fields, and her boundless forests. And it was not there. I sought for her greatness or for it in her rich mines, her vast world commerce, her public school system, and in her institutions of higher learning. And it was not there. I looked for it in her democratic Congress and her matchless constitution, and it was not there. Not until I went into the churches of America America, and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness, did I understand the secret of her genius and power. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Can I just tell you, my friend, that we've got to understand that the greatness of America does not come from being patriotic. It doesn't even come from the beautiful colors of this flag that we celebrate the freedom as the American. It doesn't come from a Congress. It doesn't come from an elected official. It doesn't come from the White House. It doesn't come from a president. It doesn't come from anybody. The only reason a America is great is because America is godly. And I understand that we're living in an age right now where godliness is not popular to speak of in association to the history of the United States. But we cannot deny the fact that this nation was founded on principles that are timeless truths of the word of Almighty God. And today, amen, we can stand and say that America is great because in its inception in birth, America was godly. And I pray that we as a nation begin to return back to the roots from which we have grown and understand that the greatness of our country is not going to come from a Congress, but rather from a congregation of blood-bought men and women of God that are full of the Holy Ghost and that want to stand for truth and stand for righteousness. And America needs to know that the greatest source of this freedom that we have is from the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. And that we as the body of Christ have an obligation to share the freedom of the gospel with as many people as we possibly can. And when we do that, we will see a nation that is rebirthed, reborn, and renewed by the power of the Holy Ghost because I feel deep within me that God is not yet done with the United States. Can somebody shout amen? Jesus said, if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And I know we live in a nation, and I could just say a whole lot about what is going on within the classrooms of public education, but I will just, just skim the surface by saying that it's no longer permissible for our children to recite the Pledge of Allegiance simply because it includes the words, one nation under God. And I defy anybody that tries to take that phrase out of the Pledge of the United States of America because we still are one nation under God. And if we take God out of that phrase, that means we are one nation going under. We cannot make it without God. I said, we cannot make it without God. You look at the nations around that have denied the existence of God and adopted atheism as their, as their, their, their national religion. You look at the nations where religion and the word of God is suppressed, where Churches have to go underground. Those nations are not blessed. Why? Because they've not recognized the blesser and the freedom that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
public school teacher's discipline simply because she kept her Bible on her desk and she read it at lunchtime and she was disciplined for reading the Word of God. Isn't it amazing? She could have read anything else and nobody would have said a thing. But she read the Word of God and was publicly disciplined for it. A politician can make a statement that all men are created by God and he's accused of the violation of church and state. It's confusing to see the courts and our Congress rule against the very freedom that put them in office and on the bench. And I know I'm probably going to get in trouble here, but it is troubling to me to see somebody that is on the Olympic team of the United States that has been blessed to be able with her gifts and abilities to represent our country, yet she stands and turns her back on the flag and covers her face with a black cloth and she is applauded by the White House. God forbid. You have been given the freedom to excel and represent our country. Listen, you need, I don't care if you agree with everything or not, it doesn't matter. You and I have an opportunity to exercise our gifts and our abilities. And if God's given us that freedom and our nation's given us that freedom, we need to honor the God that gave us the gifts and honor the nation that we represent. There is no reason to buy into the ideology. Let me tell you something. There is no superior race. God has brought us together white, black, Caucasian, Hispanic. It doesn't matter the ethnicity. When you come and celebrate America, we are all Americans. And under the banner of the flag, we are all free because men didn't fight for only the whites and the blacks or the Hispanics. Men fought for a nation so that we could celebrate Celebrate the freedom of the word of Almighty God. That's why they fought. So as we look at the flag of this great land, we see the color of white, which signifies and represents purity. And as I look at the white on this flag, I think of the men and women that were willing to leave their native country of England for one reason— it was to come so they could escape the tyranny of a land that denied their right to worship God in the way that they felt like they needed to worship God. These men and women were wealthy and they left it all. Many of them leaving businesses and wealth and notoriety behind so that they could come and gather together without a tyrannical thumb coming down upon them and telling them that they had to come under a state or religion. That is why America was founded. It was founded upon the purity of a worship that comes from the purity of their heart. And may I just say again, we've got to be very careful because you see, the more power that we give to those in governmental control, the less freedom that we will have. And brother, you better believe there is coming a day and there are those that are in political power that want to bring the tyrannical thumb down upon the church and tell you what you can and what you cannot do. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. I respect the authority, but I give the word of God the supreme authority over what any man says. And I believe that we need to stand as the body of Christ and realize we cannot tolerate any type of religious discrimination that comes against our freedom to worship God in spirit and in truth. I haven't talked about it for a very long time. I've really tried to be careful. In the beginning, I said a lot about it, but I haven't said much here recently but I'm going to be very, very blunt with you. If you thought COVID-19 was a simple virus that appeared out of nowhere, there's much more to it than what you realize. Is the virus a real thing? Yes, it's a very real thing, just like any other virus. But it was manipulated and used by those that fundamentally wanted to change the core of the United States of America and fundamentally wanted to change who we were as a nation. And it was used to limit the freedom of the United States of America and tell us when we can worship and when we can't worship. Tell us when we can open our doors and when we can't open our doors. Tell us how and 
Let me tell you something, my friend. Amen. By the grace of God, and I'm not perfect, but as long as I have the privilege of standing here as the shepherd of this congregation, I want you to know we cannot let somebody dictate to us how and when we worship the God that has saved us and redeemed us and bought us by the blood and given us life and health and peace and joy and happiness. Amen. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is an agenda that is trying to undermine what God is doing in the United States. And I stand because of the power of Almighty God. As kings and priests, we stand against anything that would limit the freedom within our country. Somebody shout amen. But as I look at the purity of these men and these women, I am thankful that it comes from the purity of the Son of Almighty God. The one who came, as the Bible said, and lived without sin. He lived without sin. Amen. He was tempted, the Bible says, in all points like as we are, yet without sin. I am thankful to let you know, my friend, that God has given us an example through the Lord Jesus Christ that in spite of our failures, in spite of our imperfections, we have a pure high priest that has gone into the heavens and has been tempted in every way that you have been tempted, and he overcame why? So that you and I could, by his grace, overcome somebody's shout, amen. The Bible said he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I believe that by his grace, we can continue to worship, amen, in the purity of our heart and in the purity of our spirit. And when you look at the flag and you see that white color, I want you to thank God, amen, for the purity of the heart of the men and women that founded this nation and realize that it is a pure worship of Almighty God that has given us the privilege to do what we do here today. I look at the red that is on the flag of the United States of America, which represents valor. I understand and I look back at the men and women that have fought in the various battles that were needed to be fought in order for us to be free. And the blood that was spilled, countless lives that were lost on battlefields, sons that never came home to their mothers. Husbands that never came home to their wives. Fathers that never came home to their children. Mothers that never came home simply because they have given their life. And I want you to understand, my friend, I don't take that very lightly. I understand that my freedom came because somebody was willing, amen, to go across the sea and fight for my freedom. And again, you that have served in the military, God bless you, thank you, and please give them one more round of applause. But even more so, I am thankful for the valor of one man willing to face an angry mob of hateful people, betrayed with a kiss by one of his closest friends, denied by one of his closest confidants, and left alone by those he trusted, facing the most cruel punishment that any man could ever face, the flogging of a Roman soldier, the accusations of the religious hierarchy, that he was a blasphemer and performed miracles by demonic power. He faced it all, but most importantly, he faced the most painful death that any man has ever faced that being a Roman crucifixion on a cross and from the purity of his life spilled the blood that has washed away every single sin that has ever been committed by mankind. And I want to tell you this morning right now, the blood will never lose its power. I said the blood will never lose its power. Oh, hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has the power to forgive absolutely any sin. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have been. I don't care where you have been. Today, the blood is able to forgive absolutely any sin and wash you white as snow and take you out of the pit and put you in the palace, take you out of despair and bring you into deliverance. Why? Because the blood of Jesus 
Jesus is the greatest cleansing, forgiving agent that has ever been given. And today we are free because of the valor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. Peter said, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver, like gold from your aimless conduct, uh, received by tradition from your fathers, uh, but with the precious blood of Christ, uh, as of a lamb without blemish uh, and without spot. Today, you can hold your head high as an American citizen because of the blood spilled by men and women who fought throughout the history of our nation. But more importantly, you can hold your head high because you are a citizen of a far greater nation and a far greater kingdom. And you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. And you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Church, I worship today not because of religion. You're here not because of some obligation. You're here because Jesus chose to go to the cross for you and for me. And because of that, we can be forgiven. Because of the blood, my sins have been atoned. Because of the blood, I've been blessed. My iniquity's been cleansed. I've been delivered from my past, and I have been set free, and I have the great I am living within me. The blood of my, the blood of Jesus has given my spirit a place in the heavenlies because I've been given justice that I did not deserve. I've been made a king and a priest unto God, redeemed, saved, and a truth has been given that no man can take away. And because of the blood of Jesus, you and I have victory over over death, hell, and the grave. Because not only did he die, he rose again and proved that the devil has no power over him and the devil has no power over you and over me. And by the grace and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I stand free. Somebody shout amen. I've redeemed you to myself, saith the Lord. You are a peculiar people that has been called out from this world. My blood has redeemed and cleansed you and set you apart. Rise up as the people that I have called you to be. Be the voice that I have called you to be. Be the the feet that I have called you to be. You are my people, saith the Lord. I have redeemed you out of Egypt under the promised land. Now go and proclaim that which I have given unto you and the freedom that is within you. Proclaim to the oppressed and the bound within the community in which you live. You are my people, saith the Lord, I have bought you by my blood, and now go proclaim freedom to the world. You are free, and you are mine. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many are glad to be free this morning? I said, how many are glad to be free this morning? Blue signifies vigilance, perseverance, and justice. America is free because America is just. Thomas Jefferson penned these words in the Declaration of Independence. He said, We hold these truths. To be self evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I am glad that no matter the race, no matter the color, 
no matter the culture or the creed. All men live under the same banner of justice within this great land. And today, you and I live in a country where every man and woman has the opportunity to succeed and be who they were created to be. The color of your skin matters not in the sight of God. Your ethnicity, your background matters not in the sight of God. And today, as Americans, we celebrate not as white, oriental, black, Hispanic, or any other nationality, but we celebrate as Americans. Because as long as America remains just, America will remain free. But I'm even more thankful that in like manner, just as God founded this nation upon his word of justice, I'm grateful that as a church, there is no ethnicity that divides the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today the Bible said that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men would count slackness, but he's long-suffering to us word. He is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl has the same opportunity to be saved because God is a just God, and he will not deny anybody forgiveness. I don't care where you come from. You can be the worst dude on the streets of South Bend that has been rejected, incarcerated. It doesn't matter. The Lord Jesus Christ has his arms open wide to you today, and he will be able to embrace you and forgive you, and thank God there is no limit to the grace of Almighty God. Peter opened his mouth in Acts 10 and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. And unfortunately, in our nation, we have segmented our society and judged the worth of people based upon the color of their skin. We value people according to their economic background or ethnicity. It is a sad state when you live in a country where, yes, there is discrimination. We, we, we address that. We understand that. But you see, as the body of Christ, we don't see people based on their outward appearance. We don't see people, amen, based on their family background. We see people as an eternal soul that has been created to become somebody great in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to tell you this morning, the devil has convinced some of you that because of your skin color or ethnicity or background, that you don't have the same opportunity. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You have been filled with the power of Almighty God, and you can become absolutely anything that God has created you to be and if you will step into your God-given destiny there is nobody that can stand in the way of you becoming everything that you have been from the moment you were conceived in your mama's womb God gave you the power to become who you are don't let the devil stop what God wanted to do in your life somebody shout amen and as I close when it comes to the body of Christ can we come to the place where we do not let the color of someone's skin stop me from reaching out my hand and embracing them as my brother and as my sister? Can we come to the place where this church, amen, there is no, no, person that would walk into these doors, that would ever sense any type of discrimination against them because of who they are. Can we, through the Spirit of God, be a church that is open to all men, all women, and embrace them and let them know there is mercy in the house of Almighty God? Can we do that? Shout amen. And here's why. I read it earlier. Let me read it again. In Revelation chapter 5, they sung a new song. 
And they said, thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, because you were slain, and you have redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. You know the beautiful thing about heaven? Is I'm going to stand next to people that did not speak the same language that I spoke in this world. Beautiful thing about heaven is you've got some people that never spoke a word of English in their life that you're going to be worshiping with throughout all of eternity. so funny, my, my wife and I, the first time we went to Israel, one night we had taken a stroll with some other people from the tour, a little Jewish boy, couldn't have been more than five years old, came up to us and was trying to engage in conversation, and so he was speaking in Hebrew, and of course we said, we don't know, couldn't understand. He said, oh, so then he flipped over to, to Arabic and started speaking in Arabic. Don't understand. I think he spoke a third language. I don't even know what the third language was. Started speaking a third language. We finally said, America, oh, American. Then he spoke English to us. So we're telling our tour guide, our Jewish tour guide, the next day of our experience, and this is what he said. He said, he said, well, let me ask you. He said, what do you call somebody that speaks three languages? We said, trilingual. He said, you're right. So what, what, what do you call somebody who speaks two languages? Bilingual. He said, you're right. He said, so what do you call somebody who speaks one language? He said, I don't know. He said, American. <laughs> He's right. But whether you are trilingual, bilingual, or a good old-fashioned American that just knows how to speak whatever you speak. Thank God we're going to worship together. Jesus, through all the ages of time, because of the purity and the valor and the justice, not of America, but of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us life liberty and freedom and today we're going to celebrate that we're going to celebrate that through the remembrance of the blood and the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ 